So we're going to look at another way to balance chemical reactions. And this way is a little bit more than what you learned in Gen Chem 1. It's a little extra is what I like to say. And the reason it comes into play is when we are doing redox reactions, which is reduction re um, oxidation, um, there can be like extra elements that are kind of part of the reaction, but not part, kind of like spectator ions. And um, basically, you just can sometimes end up with a lot of elements to balance. So right now, as I have this drawn, it doesn't look like there's as many to balance. By the time we get to the end, you're going to see that we have more species in here than it looks initially. The reason why we even need this, though, is because if you try to balance this, notice that this has oxygen on the left, but there's like no oxygen at all on the right. And that's because the water it's in is actually going to play a role. We're going to add water when we're balancing out this reaction. Another part of this is that um, if instead of BRO, if this were BR or BR minus, if this were BRO right there, even that scenario where I have an oxygen on that side won't work for balancing like in your normal back and forth method because... Notice I need three of them, so there's three oxygen, but then that totally messes up my BR because I've got, if I try to fix this with three BR, but now I've got nine oxygen, and you see how like you end up going back and forth, there's like no solution. So all this comes down to that we need like more of a way to balance something. So what we're doing, and the direction we're heading with this is that we are heading towards balancing reactions that can be used for batteries and things like that. And we're going to be using water and acid. We're going to be adding acid to help make these reactions happen. So the first series I'm going to show you is how to balance an acid. And then I'll show you how to balance in base in the, another video. As a note, if you go about Googling on the internet to balance in base, there are two methods to balance in base. I'm going to teach you the one that just has you balance it as though you're balancing an acid every time. And then you're going to add OH to both sides. I'm going to show you that method. If you're Googling and trying to find one and you find one where part of the balancing involves adding OH like early on, not balancing an acid first, that's a different method that I'm not going to be going into because I personally feel like it's easier just to learn one method instead of learning more things to throw in to balance if you're going to balance in base or whatever. So I feel like it's easier to learn one method and then at the end if you need to make it in base, you just add a little tiny bit more and you're good. So um, this is going to be in acid. <clears throat> And I've got these four steps. If you want to pause the video and write these down, you can. They're also in the summary at the end of the video. So the first thing you want to do is you want to split and then balance the elements. This is kind of like in the acid section where you're picking uh, conjugate pairs in a way. You're, you're trying to pick the things that aren't hydrogens or oxygens to kind of pair up. So I've got a zinc going to a zinc 2 plus. So that's one of mine. And then I've got a bromine going to a BR minus. Now, when I was taught this, I actually was taught to do it over here. But what I want to let you know is you're going to combine these back together when you get down to this step. And for me, just like going back and forth and being like, I'm going to put all these guys on the left of my new big combined arrow. And then I'm going to put all these on the left. But then these go on the right. And there were times when I accidentally put these ones like on the right. And I just feel like if you keep the arrows lined up, then it's very clear. Like everything on this side is going to go on the left. Everything on this side is going to go on the right. And you're not like jumping back and forth between two sides. That's why I do it that way. Now on this one, when balancing the elements, we're not talking about oxygen or hydrogen. So we're not trying to balance in. We're just trying to make sure, do I have the same number of zinc on both sides? Yeah. Do I have the same number of bromine? This is what it would look like if I didn't have it. And this is where you want to deal with it because if you don't deal with it right now, you can end up just, it'll completely mess up and give you the wrong number for balancing. But you just don't always have to balance both of them. Sometimes they come balanced. But in this case, you see that there's a BR2. You would have to put the 2BR before you go any, 2BRO3 before you go any further. So that's what I'm talking about, the elements needing to be balanced. I'm going to slide that way over here to the side. All right, so... Now, there's an order of what we're going to add. First, we're going to add water. And what water does is it kind of helps us add oxygen to the equation. It's going to help with that scenario. When you add water, you always are also adding H. So we have to add H's to the opposite side to fix it. And then ultimately, this reaction is an oxidation-reduction reaction. We've got to have electrons. But overall, reactions don't say the electrons. Electrons have to end up canceling. So we need to put the electrons in. So we can make sure we have the same number of electrons both sides, but then we're going to cancel them out. So finally, on this step, this is where you're going to um, cancel out your electrons, and here's where we're going to combine. 
So we're going to add things in order. I'm going to look at the zinc. You only have to add it when you need it. So like when we're looking at the zinc, I don't need any oxygen, so I'm not going to add the water. Also, I don't need any hydrogen. So I'm not going to add the hydrogen. You just need to add in that one the E to the most positive side. Here's the positive side with the 2 plus. So I'm going to add two electrons to that side. So now I have a two negatives and two positives. That makes this whole side neutral. And also we can already see that that side's neutral. So that's good to go. Then I'm going to do my BRO3 minus, going to my BR minus. Now I need water and where I need the oxygen is on the right hand side. And I don't need just one oxygen, I need three oxygens. I add them as water. Now I did just introduce my extra H's. I added six H's in. So I need to go over here and put six H pluses in. So now all my elements are balanced, but I'm not charge balanced. If I zoom in and I look over here, this actually is going to give me 6 plus and a minus 1, which is plus 5. Then if I go over to here, this gives me a minus 1. So right now, my reactions, the left side charge-wise doesn't equal the right side. And for this to be fully balanced, your charges will match on both sides. This isn't balanced yet. Always add electrons to the most positive side. That's going to be the left side. And I need to add enough so that I can, I don't need both sides to be zero. It's totally okay if they both have a charge. They just need to be the same charge. So if I add six electrons, so that's six minuses with a plus five, that's going to give me a minus one charge. So both sides will be minus one. And that's what I want to do. At this point, I would do a quick pause and just make sure that your electrons actually did end up opposite. That's what they should have done, and these did. So I've got electrons on the right and electrons on the right left. If they didn't, you've made a mistake somewhere. And it's always good to start up when you see your mistake, then to work it all the way to the end, and then try to find the mistake. So the next thing is that we need to balance the electrons when we're bringing them together. So um, in this case, my guy right here, he's got two electrons. This has six. They've got to cancel out. So I'm going to be multiplying everything in here by three. And you can rewrite it. You can, you know, like cross it out and, you know, change it like that. I'm going to rewrite it going to the next line. So that gives me three zinc goes to three zinc plus two plus six electrons. And then this next one, I don't need to change, but there will be cases where you have to change both of them. And maybe you'd have to scale them both up. You just try to look for the um, lowest common multiple. So sometimes you'll have a scenario like this where you have two electrons on one side and then three electrons on another. And you have to multiply, in that kind of a case, the whole thing here by two and then this whole thing by three, which will give you six electrons and six electrons. So that's the lowest common multiple. Let's scooch that over to the side. All right, so... Now that we finally have everything, we can do it the thing where we combine them and then we can cancel if there's stuff on both sides. Um, <clears throat> if you want to combine it, including the electrons and then cancel, you can. I'm going to just combine without the electrons. So paste. Then I'm going to just add this one in over to this side. So that's all of my ones on my left. Oops. And then um, for my right hand side. And I accidentally grabbed the electrons there, but they already canceled out. And I'm going to bring these ones up and over. And I don't see anything on both sides that need to cancel, so I'm good. And this is balanced.